at podcastufo.com is a story by Charles Lear. A UFO captured by children in Japan. And Mr. Lear begins. Capturing a UFO in a photo or video is the goal of many UFO enthusiasts. But wouldn't it be great to physically capture a UFO and examine it? From Japan comes the story of a group of young boys who claim to have done just that. According to them, it was a small hat-shaped object that eventually managed to escape from them, but not before they were able to make some detailed drawings of it. The story made international news and is still discussed today. Japanese researcher Otaku Papa wrote a well-researched six-part series about the case entitled Amazing Japanese Boys Who Captured a Small UFO in 1972. And he published it on his site, otakupapa.net. The story as told by Otaku Papa begins with a report by eighth grade middle school student, Michio Sio, that at around sunset on August 25th, he had seen a small, strange object flying around a rice field. According to him, it would move instantly from one position to another, as if it were teleporting. Sio went home and told his friend, Yasui Mori, what he had seen. Yasuo told his brother, Hiroshi, and the two of them, along with a friend of Hiroshi's, Kayojima, went to the field with Sio to see for themselves. A little after 8 p.m., Sio saw something fly around that had flashing lights. The other boys then saw it and watched it land. As the boys moved closer, it flickered with a silverfish light. Hiroshi Mori reached out to touch the object. It suddenly glowed blue, and the boys ran away. According to the boys, it pulsated in two to three second cycles. After about 30 minutes, they approached again and saw that the object was gone. They went back the next evening and saw a 20 centimeter circle and four small indentations that formed a square. After this, the boys went out every night and their number grew to nine souls. They had more sightings and tried to take pictures, but the camera would fail or the pictures would turn out blurry and sometimes completely black. According to, Atu, according to Atuko Papa, on September 19th or 20th, depending on the source, the boys managed to physically capture the objects they saw. On this occasion, when they got to the field, they saw an object shaped like a hat. They moved off to discuss what to do and came up with a plan. They would cover the object with a piece of cloth, pour water on it. They never saw anything when it rained, so they assumed what they were looking for was vulnerable to water. And then they would grab it. According to Ataku Papa, depending on the source, either Kaiku Fujimoto, one of the later additions to the group, or Hiroshi Mori himself, covered the object, poured water upon it, and then threw a cinder block at it. When the block hit it, there was a dull thud and no reaction from the object. Either Fujimoto or Mori, fearful of radiation, picked the object up with the hem of his school uniform. The object remained inert, and the boys decided to take it to Mori's house. There they examined it, and noted that it seemed to be made of cast metal that was lighter than one might expect, and strong. Ojima weighed, measured, and sketched the object. He came up with a weight between one and a third and one and a half kilograms, a height of seven centimeters, a diameter of 18 centimeters at the base, and six centimeters at the top. On the bottom, there were circular grooves resembling those in a phonograph record and a design that seemed to depict waves and birds. In the center was a square that looked like it might be removable 
with a grid pattern of holes. They tried prying up the square, but were not unable to do so. They hit it with a hammer, but it didn't even make a scratch. They were able to look through the holes and saw something like radio parts inside. Before he went to sleep, Hiroshi Mori put the object in a plastic bag that he then put inside a knapsack. He then tied the mouth of the knapsack with string, but in spite of his efforts, the object was gone when he woke up. They found the object again, and this time, Hiroshi Mori made a mark on it with an oil-based ink to settle the argument as to whether they were dealing with the same object. When it disappeared for the second time, and it was once again recovered, the same mark was there. The, this cycle of disappearance and recovery went on for a total of five or six times until the object never again reappeared. Two prominent Japanese astronomers, Tsutomo Seki and Koichi Ike, became interested in the case. Seki was known for his discovery of six comets. In 1972, he was a radio personality with Kochi Radio Broadcasting. One of the boys, Sadayo Fujiwara, called the radio station to tell Seki their story. A female producer answered, took a message, and passed it on to Seki. Seki was intrigued, called Ike, and asked him to investigate. E.K. interviewed the boys and came away impressed. He provided C.K. with his recordings of witness accounts and his pictures of the site. C.K. went to investigate himself. He came to believe that the boys were telling the truth and published an article in an astronomy journal. This brought the story to the attention of the media and other UFO investigators and it was treated as a genuine mystery, and was told and retold for almost 40 years. Sadayo Fujiwara's mother, Kiyoko, reported seeing a flying saucer-shaped object on October the 26th, a month after the boys said their UFO had disappeared for good.